What up, y'all? It's your boy Scott here. And make sure you click on that subscribe button right there so you don't miss out on one episode if I'm not going to hold you. And while you're there, cut on those notifications as well, drop a comment, and join in the Discord. I'm not going to hold you. If you're going to go through all this and basically throw Justin to the wolves, give him at the way they started the two years, like basically they, they was like, we're going to see if he got some in him, but we really, this is not our guy, but we're going to give him enough to make him think he has the actual chance. If you're going to do that to Justin, your job on the line, you go out there, you get this generational prospect. And I say generational air quotes because we don't really know. So he actually plays. You got to go all in and then look at the fucking NFC. The NFC is the JV league of the NFL. There's no dominant team in the NFC. The, 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 the what's called the division is wide open. It's wide fucking open. So go out there and load up. Go out there and get you a Saquon Barkley or a Josh Jacobs. Well, I, I never expected Mike Evans to be an actual target, but go out there, trade up, go get you one of those, uh, you know, big stud wide receivers. You have to build this team. Don't don't nickel and diamond. I don't want to hear about financial uh, flexibility. I don't want to hear about windows. It's the NFL. You have a window one now and one year. Don't have a window the next. Take advantage of the rookie quarter rookie contract, which you've heard so fucking much about when it comes to Justin. Rookie skill, rookie skill, reset the rookie skill. Okay, we'll use the money that you got right now in the rookie skill. I want to see that. If we come out but, of free agency, oh, let me just say this real quick. If we yeah. come out of free agency and there's not at least one splash signing, I'm gonna be upset. I'm I'm I'm, I'm not saying I I feel like right now is the time. Hop on this opportunity while you got it right now. And if you are gonna do one or two tier B guys, and maybe a tier three guy, then I'm expecting you to be aggressive in the draft and trade your ass up and go get you a neighbor or a Doomsday or, or, Mar- or Marvin Harrison Jr. I I think the most aggressive thing you will see from Ryan Poles this offseason is getting his quarterback. Uh, I know and, people and, don't want to hear it. They the don't want to hear it. But I'm I'm telling you because you like, like you just said, it's going to be a gift and a curse. You yep. reset that quarterback clock. So now... Granted, I want to bring pieces in, but like he said, he's always said, I don't want to overpay. I don't want I want to make sure I'm getting my guy. So with that, I I don't think they have a problem winning seven games next season. I know we're all sitting here saying this should be an eight, if nine, they win ten win teams. Next I have a problem. And, I have a massive if they problem. Win, if they win seven games and Caleb shows us the flashes as a passer that Justin never showed, I promise you they don't give a fuck. But I feel like one hundred percent. Dante's fucking. You're a potty right now, bro. Right, this is it. Ryan's. This is Ryan Poles putting his official stamp on everything that he's been doing the last couple of years by getting his quarterback. This is giving him extra years. This is saying, hey, believe in me. I've seen how it's done in KC. This is, hey, if they KC win seven if, right away. If they go, well, KC was competing already before because they had Alex right. Smith. The yeah, difference was before. they were. Right. The difference is they went from division wild card divisional round to Super Bowl with Pat. But this is Ryan Poe saying, I got my guy. If they go seven and ten, eight and nine, but Shorty takes off like gangbusters towards the back end of the season, where we're talking about multiple 300 yard passing games, he's making everything look crazy. You win it because of him. Dante is 100% right. They are not going to trip. Then he's going to be like, okay, cool. Spring 2025, there goes the Chase debit card. There goes the Chime card, the Cash App card, whatever. I got fucking Bitcoin. Here's a couple food stamps. He's going to go and pay for whoever <laughs> because he's going to see that okay. his so guy what you're, what you're did saying it. Is this. Let, me make sure, let me make sure I got this right. Then we'll go to bang. You're saying he wants to still see before he spends money. Even yeah. though he, he's drafting this guy, he still wants to see it. Yeah, I don't, probably, think, probably. I don't think he thinks we're going into the window. I think it's very yeah. Jed Hoyer-like. Let yeah. me see what we got. The window starts in 2025. And then Jed Hoyer's going to spend the goddamn money. Right, and, I, and I'm gonna go, we can go to bang real quick, but I'll say this. Perfect example. His rookie season, Cam Newton went 6-10. and 10, But Cam Newton threw for 4,000 yards. Like, Cam Newton arrived on the scene his rookie year. If we get that, I Yo, guarantee you they are if they, if they are they are contending yards and looking like a guy. Yeah, if they said wins, I'll be happy. I'm not gonna say. It. I'm just saying how I feel. You're not gonna be happy. Stop <laughs> lying. You gonna no, be mad. <laughs> no, I'm saying no. Caleb is showing now. I'm just saying from an off season perspective, going into the season, I'm not gonna be happy if that's the strategy. If we talking oh. about end of the year, and he, and he still, even I still think if Caleb 
balls out, then you should be winning more than seven fucking games. That that's kind of all my fucking do. You playing a fucking last place schedule, but well, go ahead, man. You just hit what I was about to say. You just hit exactly what I was about to say. Um, that's the last play schedule that they got to play. And they were seven and ten with the number one pick in the draft and the number nine pick in the draft and eighty million dollars in cap room. Um, if they win seven games, I will be disappointed, especially knowing that they should have won 10. I will be disappointed if they lose against some of the teams that they're up against. And I do believe some of the teams that they're up against, um, is probably going to regress and you could be able to take advantage of it, which your defense on point. So, um, I think that I'm not saying that he needs to break the bank, but he needs to hit on some key free agents. Like, he do, he do need to come. Uh, Christian Wilkins. That's a guy. I like right that there. name. I like I that name. I don't know. Right there, I don't know who he is interested in himself. But I'll say this. The, what we know about this defense is that a three tech runs it. Yes. You don't have that currently unless you think um, Dexter Jr., is going to be that person um, that works in that lane. But if you get a Christian Wilkinson, I mean, Wilkins, excuse me, and that's your three tech, and this is a a young pro bowler at that, you know what I'm saying? You put him in that defense, I don't care who you put across Montez Sweat. That person is going to have a pro bowl type year because you're going to be so worried about Sweat and the three tech that that person that's opposing them is going to have a field day if that's the neil hunter um or what's that uh jonathan green law i think green jonathan grenard grenard, grenard yeah, from yeah. Houston. yeah if if you have somebody that's that's on that other side because montez sweat is good at the run like he's a pass rusher that can also stop the run so you put a pure pass rusher on that other side with wilkins um as your three tech that defense, which was already trending towards top 10 without a steady three tech, becomes a top five defense. That means but, Caleb is okay. But if you're going to spend, and to, to kind of go to what we were talking about spending on the offensive side, if you're going to spend on any of the lines, it needs to be at center. You have to you. throw a bag at somebody at center. like, And it can't be what they did with uh, Lucas Patrick. No, it has to be a center. Like somebody from day one that he is a center only. He don't play left guard if we're moving him to center, or he played right guard, we're moving him to center. You have to get a center. And I prefer a veteran center. Even though I know this is deep as far as um, you know, linemen for for the draft, this has to be a veteran center that can go ahead and protect. You have to give Caleb that safety blanket in front of him with the center and behind him. With Saquon Barkley or a better running back, you have to make the game easier for him. Yeah, the issue with that, the issue is that at the center spot is who's there that you're going to – like Connor Williams just coming off the uh, ACL, and he tore that you week can, 14. You can go with Cushenberry. You can go with Cushenberry. You but can I don't, go and get the kid from uh, Tennessee. I think his last name is Brewer. He played alongside Nate Davis. I don't know – I don't know if I'm willing to spend ten million on them niggas though. I might want to find that in the draft. So you would go rookie, you go rookie center, rookie QB? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that in a That's year so that Scott is in a in a year that we all are kind of agreeing, like we need more than seven wins. You know, we need to take see marketable improvement. I'm with you. I, I'm it's looking just, at the schedule now and just how like, you know, you can't you can look at the schedule and say, uh, you know, every year everybody looks at the schedule and say they're going 18 and 0, but Tennessee Titans should be winnable. Yep. Carolina should be winnable. Yep. New England should be winnable. Yep. Jack Jacksonville is winnable. That's four. Uh Indianapolis Colts is winnable. Five. Washington Washington Commanders is winnable. Six. Arizona Cardinals is winnable. Seven. And then say you split with the division. You got ten wins, you know. I think they got that with the with a rookie center or a vet center. See, I just don't want to overpay for that. I think y'all putting way too much 
emphasis on the strength of schedule because we do this every year, and then at the end of the season, we look back That's at the true. schedule. And stuff that That's, true. That's true, but I think so, those teams' names still going to be hot. Huh? Them teams I still think those teams going to be bad. Yeah, you, still, you can't say still be bad. you can't you can't say that they're gonna take away Kirk Cousins from Minnesota and be we good. can't and we can't sweep them. We well, you just saw them we just it. saw we just saw what they looked like. We beat them with fucking they had like three Should quarterbacks. Wait a minute, I, hear I didn't you, say I didn't say they, 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 they was gonna go to Houston to beat the Texans. Right, I ain't, I ain't say, say they was gonna go to San Francisco and beat the Forty Nine. I didn't say they was gonna beat the Rams. I say they was gonna beat the Rams. I didn't say they gonna beat the Packers. I'm just, I'm just hearing way too much positivity. Somebody had to come with a little bit of reality. Like we, no we with you. We gonna win the last twelve games. I, 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 I think know. the, I think the reality that Mikey gave us is not naming all of the teams. Then paper on his player haters old news money on the other line, so I'm not gonna hold you. Money on the other line, so I'm not gonna.